Welcome to Shardcast, the Brandon Sanderson podcast. We're a bunch of mega fans giving you the news, discussion, and of course, a whole lot of opinions about Brandon's works and the Cosmere. I'm Eric, and joining me, uh, clearly wearing a different t-shirt, uh, is Ian. I was so close to not laughing. Hello, <laughs> I am Weary Rider. We're, we're not, we, we, yes, we're, we're not, yes. Uh, we're not wearing the same shirt. That would be silly. Uh, yeah, the also, words are in completely different directions. Yeah, yeah. It's also joining us is Marvin. Yeah. I am Felio, and surprise, I'm also wearing the same shirt. <laughs> we definitely didn't have him specifically change into the shirt once Ian and I uh, came on the show with the same one. Uh, that'd be silly. And also not wearing a Raffo shirt, but still wearing red, uh, is Grace. Hello, I'm Gator Grill. I don't actually own the Raffo shirt, otherwise <laughs> I, I would have put it on, but same color, so. Yeah, 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 yeah. So... This episode has massive Rhythm of War spoilers. So you should, like, not be listening to this episode if you haven't finished the book. And I mean it. So we're going to do we're going to do a countdown. It's like, so you better not stay in the video. Because why? Uh, well, so so race is dead now. So that's. That's a thing. Oh, we'll probably talk about Cosmere spoilers too, by the way. Uh, so, so Ra- race is dead. Uh, and Teravangian is now Odium. So, see, really, we're just theming things in an odious color. Okay, that's 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 what it is. Even though, like, Odium has a lot of different colors because he has gold, yeah. he has like the purple, uh, and then like the, the the red as well. Yeah, red is like corrupted in best to try. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, but he does that a lot of the time. He does that all the time. Stitch and blue shirts are pretty hard to come by, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 right, exactly. Oh, and and race died with night blo- uh, from Nightblood, so that's great. And Cultivation apparently planned this the whole time. Apparently. So why don't we yep. why don't we just talk about that? Why don't why don't so th- this this is gonna less be on Teravangian and more of uh Teravangian's odium now, and that's that's that this is how we named the podcast this, so it's not spoilers in the title. Yeah. Yeah. Opening yeah. thoughts, what do you think? What's your thoughts on this? That's not good. No, not yeah. good. Ninety five percent terrified. Five percent very happy because it means I won in a copper mind argument <laughs> I've been having for like five years. Oh, so. about the vessel and the shards. Yes. Yeah. 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 I I will concede this one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will concede. Uh, is a great reason to not put vessels uh, names on the Cosmere nav box though on the cover yep. line <laughs> yeah, yeah. another good Wait, thing I, that comes out of it i don't get why we're so scared though teravangian's just gonna save everyone yeah yeah like, yeah i don't know yeah. what the problem is <sighs> he, he just got his switch fulfilled by cultivation like he has the ultimate capacity to do it now so it yeah because teravangian of every person in the cosmere would be like no 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 i can take everyone's burdens and save mm-hmm. everyone Great. This is gonna go great. So I mean, this this is cult- this was cultivation's plan, right? Like cultivation like the Night Watcher had night blood for a time, right? Theoretically, yes. That, that that's she at she at least could get a hold of it in order to give it to someone. Y- yeah. Switches So I I don't really know how night blood got from Vasher to the Night Watcher and then to Nail and then to Zeth. Like, geez, that is some that is some future sight, especially with these quotes where Tear of Angels like, man, this isn't really like very solid at all. And Cultivation's like, yeah, I know. I just I was just hoping. I was just hoping this would work out. It's like, oh geez. But one okay. One thing I find interesting about that quote in the context of what happened is that he very specifically says you can't use future sight to see the hearts of men which, oh really yeah which in the context of like grooming someone to take up odium seems like you're <laughs> taking a risk like i i think seeing their hearts and knowing 
whether or not they'd be good to, with the power or, or would do terrible things would be one of those things you'd want to know. Yeah, yeah. I think this, like her removing Dalinar's memories, like was a gambit that she <laughs> didn't know if it would succeed. Like she says, like this could provide Odium a weapon. Like you could end up becoming his champion because of this. But there's a chance that Dalinar could become the bombsmith instead. I think um, cultivation, also known as Coravelli Mavas, she who brings the these at dawn. Yeah, yeah. We we not only uh, get uh, her name mm-hmm. and uh, that there's another exciting confirmation that we have about mm-hmm. cultivation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Coravelli Mavas, she who brings the these at dawn, and I will always say the full thing because it's an <laughs> awesome name. Um, I think she has a gambling problem because like, <laughs> too, too many. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Ah, the the anti Voren uh, gambling thing is just because whoa, Ooh. you you gamble way too much. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Can't tell about Snow's wife having a gambling problem. So no, won't have this in my religion. Oh, uh, but there, there's also confirmation that there was a dragon. There's a dragon on Roshar and uh, Asmodeus got a confirmation that. The dragon and the person who's been around, who's as old as Hoyt is, are the same pre- people. So that's cultivation's a dragon confirmed. So Ian's very excited. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> yeah. So it's like cultivation, endowment, autonomy, or dragon. <laughs> I mean, uh, these, these are all these are all plausible. I really want to learn more about uh, Tanavast and cultivation's relationship. Like, yep. like that. Yeah. That is very interesting. But anyway. Mm-hmm. We're already off task. Great. Uh, but I mean, this is also going to be a lot about cultivation in this episode. Speaking about the hearts of men thing, maybe, mm-hmm. like, because of course, Harvention, Dedena, Liv, they all were in the valley and actually visited cultiva- or cultivation visits at them, I guess. Maybe that mm-hmm. allowed her somewhat direct access to them. And so she didn't solely have to rely on fortune, but could see, like, okay, this guy at his heart he is a good person and so my gambit might work out uh maybe Mm -hmm. yeah she says you were heading this direction all i could do was hope that if you succeeded my gift would work that i had changed you into someone who could bear this power with honor and in reading this like he he has the compassion but also, like, the intelligence to, like, plan, right? Because there's this whole mm-hmm. part about how the power kind of wants to destroy, wreak havoc. But then Terravange is like, no, 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 no. I'll, I'll be planning and, and crafty about this. And obviously, uh, in Seizad's epigraphs, there was also the line about how, oh, if after this long, Odium's still seeking to destroy, it's because of the power. Uh, but then he says... Uh, in truth, it would be a combination of a vessel's craftiness and the power's intent that we should fear most. That's called foreshadowing, everyone. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yikes. <laughs> uh, yep. Oof. Yeah, it does make me wonder now because like, we already see Tarantian struggle with the intent and like, it's tr- yeah. trying or driving him to destroy and like to wreak havoc. But... That makes me because now we have the chance to see uh, a new vessel develop, uh, in, like in the very beginning. Like we say, it we had the very beginning, but then a three hundred year time skip, so we right. didn't really see how quickly the intent started to affect him. Yeah. So um, really excited to see how like how quickly Tarantian, the person, uh, sort of goes or uh, fades into the background, and how quickly the power takes over. Yeah, man. It is just so crazy how cultivation, like, ah, let's give you the planning, let's give you the passion, and it's like, wow, this really is the 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 perfect combo that cultivation wanted to make this work. Mm-hmm. In some ways, though, I feel like cultivation's actions pushed Teravangian to be like more ruthless and more crafty, and like when yeah. he finally does pick up the power, he's more dangerous. I I feel like <laughs> Teravangian when he. <laughs> approach to the cultivation is someone who genuinely would have held this power and tried to use it for good but now after you know years of the diagram and the silent gatherers and like all the horrible things he's done 
I, I feel like he's he's in a worse place now where he's more willing to use this power for bad things. Unintended consequences. Yes. Hey, <laughs> that's a great point because we don't, we know that Gavilar talked with Teravangian the night he died. So mm-hmm. I guess we'll get that in the Gavilar prologue as well, along with the 20 billion other things that need to be in that prologue. But, uh, yeah, it doesn't really seem like Teravangian was like this crafty person until the diagram, right? And then mm-hmm. Teravangian went to the Night Watcher to ask for capacity mm-hmm. to save people. Yeah, because it's in Oathbringer, I think it's an interlude. He talks about like he was born with like the umbilical cord around yeah. his yeah. neck. So it's like the doctors was like, oh, like he'll have diminished capacity because he was oh, deprived of, right, 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 deprived right, right. of yeah. air. Right. So I, like I don't think he was like stupid by any means. He was just like, on the lower end of average or yeah. under average. Mm-hmm. So it's like he, he the craftiness, like I think definitely came afterwards. <sighs> And like uh, on one of the reaction or on the reaction podcast uh, that came out yesterday, like uh, yeah. somebody pointed out that maybe cultivation coordinated when he was compassionate and uh, when he had his compassionate days and when he has his intelligent days. So I wonder whether maybe she said it uh, if she did set it up that way. If she made it so he was intelligent and intelligent or more intelligent until the point where he had uh, Odium's attention. And then she said, mm-hmm. okay, that task, part of the task, yeah, now I can forge the connection with like the passionate part and mm-hmm. um, make mm-hmm. him, give him the more compassionate days. Because like, it, especially towards the end there, he got increasingly compassionate and um, less yeah. than average in intelligence. Yeah, that's yeah. more what I think was happened. Like, I don't think she picked each day. She's like, oh, will yeah, be smart no. today. Like she, she tweaked the, the broad distribution mm-hmm. over time. Mm, yeah. Yeah made yeah. it so it's like all right crafty first and then yeah i like that so do we think cultivation made a massive mistake with this i i i have a a, a counter question okay that ha- okay. Into this. do we think this is the extent of her plan oh there's i'm sure she has come up with she contingencies. Must, she must have clearly like come up with so many plans, right? Uh, mm. that are just in motion, right? Uh, clearly, mm. yeah. Dalinar, Lift, and Teravangian, there are plans in motion. So mm. surely she has some sort of contingency if Teravangian goes wrong, right? Surely, mm-hmm. like she seems like one of the most crafty people in the Cosmere period, which is mm-hmm. crazy. Yeah, I think obviously there's still something in motion with Lyft that hasn't even come into play yet. Yeah, yeah. yeah th- there has to be. Yeah, I think she did make a mistake there, but how big of a mistake is uh, something we'll have to see, I guess. Like if it's just a minor mistake because her contingencies will work out, then okay, she Mm-hmm. goofed up a little but yeah if she doesn't have backup plans and or they don't work out then this is going to be a huge problem for the yeah. entire year of the cosmos and, and from a narrative perspective i think it it fits that this was a mistake it's implausible that like all of her su- plans succeed like yeah just yeah. yeah narratively that would be unsatisfying because like oh like everything is just cultivation planning thing so like her screwing up here it means like oh okay like her gambits don't always work which makes when they do that much more impactful yeah like clearly she still thinks that teravangian is more amenable than race which like I guess shows, like, how unamenable race is. (laughs) If he's like, Terra Ranger, this is an improvement. (laughs) Race was also the guy who killed the one she was in love with, so... Yeah. 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 What you just said, Ian, was very interesting because that means the it's not like the diagram was Cultivation's plan, right? No. Because it was still just the enhanced intelligence that Cultivation gave mm. that allowed Teravangian to make connections. Mm. But it's not like, like, God, if the diagram succeeded in other things, man, things would not be going good. Because clearly, mm. 
Like, if Dalinar died, then... Well, I mean, I guess that would have kind of foiled Odium in some respect. So th- <laughs> that, that could tech sort of be some contingency that uh, Cultivation I, had there. I would not be surprised if there were elements of the diagram that were, like, also a contingency plan. Yeah, it's like, hmm... Gotta kill this Dalinar guy. He's 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 no good. He's, he's gonna turn evil. But, but mostly it's Teravangian's intelligence. Uh rather yes. than like yeah. cultivation's plan per se. Yeah, like she did not like implant that into smart Teravangian's mm-hmm. brain. Like he came up with that on his own. Yeah. Man. It, it's terrifying to just say cultivation's like, hey, I'm gonna be your tutor about shards. Cause Mm-hmm. Zezad didn't have that that benefit at all, nope. right? No. Uh, so yeah. that is scary, and we're we're gonna talk about the the Hoyt epilogue for sure uh, in detail. Mm-hmm. But seems like he's already pretty good at it. Uh, yep. Mm-hmm. Interesting that Teravangian is still bound by his predecessor's agreements, mm-hmm. so that's mm-hmm. important. So the Battle of Champions will still happen, and Teravangian gets to know about kind of racist plan and uh Teravangian thinks that Teravangian is not impressed Teravangian <laughs> is not impressed I don't think that's terribly surprising like I think shards so far in the future they're, they're probably not all there just in general yeah. <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah uh-huh. what's actually interesting about the like the agreements that Odio made before or oh, the vessel change is. I wonder whether, like the agreement he made with Terravention, like uh, that he will spare Carbranth if he like succeeds. If that still is as binding as it was, because now technically he has an agreement. The vessel has an agreement with itself, in some form. I think that still has to be in force. Like I, yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, probably. I think the agreements are like binding the power, yeah. not the vessel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes sense. the metaphor like I like to use is like shards are like an office, like like the office of the president. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's like the agreement was made with like the the office of Odium. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Doesn't matter who's sitting in the chair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it needs yep. to be kept too. But like you, you made a point about like shards so far in the future, like not being all there. I think in this case, it's more that race wasn't a good fit for Odium. He liked it, but the with that Xianat thing, there was yeah. that conflict. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, because like mm-hmm. Xianat mentioned, like race does not like being questioned, but the power really did. does. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, it's like curiosity is a passion. Yeah. So so it's like that disconnect was more what was causing issues like i agree yeah i think that actually like conversely uh coravellium might be a very good fit for cultivation or might have been a very good fit seems to be doing good yeah Mm. if i uh, and if she is a dragon like it's very likely that she is then um Mm -hmm. i wonder i I guess it all that might also have been an effect because she probably was along uh, alive for a lot longer before the shattering than like the human Mm. vessels so she also has a, li- a lot more life experience and sort of her mm-hmm. species is just just is long lived so she might be able to resist the um the power for longer and stay like in charge longer and like dragons have uh, some more resilience to that yeah I, I i think it's more that like cultivation at least appears to be in line with the powers Oh, right. of the stuff because uh, she cultivates plans. <laughs> uh, yep. Cezad is like, oh, I don't think Odium, the shard of Odium, is really being controlled well. If if Cezad can see that, then yikes. <laughs> but I mean, if you're in line with the power's intent and stuff, and it, it it's kind of interesting, right? Because it yeah. seems like the power wants to destroy a lot. Mm-hmm. Grace. Well, this this conversation about being in line with the power's intent reminds me of how in Rhythm of War, there were, I think, multiple instances where they talk about cognitive shadows and how they're not really alive anymore. They're just sort of spren who become more and more in line with their intent. And I think with shards, we see the same happening just on a much bigger scale. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've I've always thought that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
I, I totally mm-hmm. agree. Because vessels are not really like mortals anymore, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, they're, yeah. they're literally, va- they literally vaporize and become like they're spread out through all the investiture there it's it's very weird right <laughs> so yeah they're they're very much more spread than people uh i think we actually had a word of brandon recently that said that like when a shard dies or when the vessel dies excuse me their body is like remade but it's not like the same body it's like star trek transporter like yeah, yeah, the yeah. matter that goes in isn't exactly the same yeah. matter that comes out yeah it's like with the heralds as well like you they don't always get the exact same body they just get a new one that's basically the same just remade with different yeah 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 Yeah. the carbon molecules are different (laughs) the pattern is the same yeah you know going off with that carbon thing grace yeah jess Mm -hmm. and i were chatting about this and i think that somehow maybe this Carbranth agreement could eventually lead to Teravangian's downfall somehow. Like, because he seems to have this greater plan for the Cosmere, but if he's still mm-hmm. bound by, you must protect Carbranth, like, that could be a hole that could be exploited. Maybe. I like this idea. Because, yeah. uh, like, mm-hmm. you can't just destroy Roshar now, right? You, you just can't do that. Mm-hmm. Like, if another, like, if Odium left and mm-hmm. What if, like, cultivation, I don't know what cultivation sources would be in this situation. The infinite sailors, obviously, Grace, right? Uh, (laughs) Sailors on the infinite sea. But, like, if Odium leaves to do greater Cosmere stuff, and cultivation's like, yo, no, I'm gonna gonna go attack Carbranth. Like, would Odium be obligated to come back to protect Carbranth and things like that? I guess it would depend on the exact phrasing of the deal. Yeah. Yeah, I'd have to... Is it, like... I swear to protect Carbranth, or mm. I swear not to murder the people of Carbranth, because those are two di- That's very true. different I th- things. I think That's it true. was just that he would spare it, so yeah, he would spare yeah. it. Okay, yeah, yeah. Mm. So that works a little less. I mean, and technically, he can't leave Roshar because that's mm. part of Dalinar's deal with. Him. Yeah, Terrangian seems to think yeah. there's some kind of loophole. I don't know exactly what that conviction. Yeah, I don't. I don't really he, know how that, that would work, right? Yeah, but he, he looked at the deal and thought, like, there was a loophole here. Dalinar can be beaten, even though we don't know what that is yet. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm so worried. I'm so worried about book five. <laughs> this is not going to go well. Oh, man, this is real bad. Actually, because we brought up Carbranth again, what do we think will be the like the relationship between Audium intervention now and the like the ex-diagram members will he try to contact them or will he just like okay i said told them that they should just deny everything and uh, i leave them alone because i don't feel like he'd do that i don't know it's like his daughter like does he mm-hmm. like, yo i'm god now hey they are <laughs> all set I was thinking if he was if he was gonna contact anyone like Adrotasia, like his childhood mm-hmm. friend, or some do something with that. But I don't, I don't know. I think he's just gonna. I think he's just gonna keep pretending to be race for a while. Yeah, I think that's really. He, he's yeah, gonna keep doing it plan. until it's advantageous. So it's like yeah. Don Lan, like they mentioned, like ex- they explicitly mentioned her in rhythm of war. Is like, oh, we'll give her something to work on that doesn't yeah. actually matter. So like, what? Done on like what is going on with her? <laughs> Probably not much. But but like the fact that like she keeps getting mentioned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So I'm I'm looking at the Carbranth deal, by the way. Yes. So so mm-hmm. there's some wording where Teravangian says, Carbranth, preserve only Carbranth. You may destroy all other nations. Just leave my city. It is what I beg of you. And then Odium responds, Carbranth. The city itself and any humans who have been born into it, along with their spouses. This is whom I will spare. Do you agree to this? So, so everyone who's pregnant needs to visit Carbon. <laughs> that's <laughs> in <Instagram. laughs> and don't, that's how we. We don't know what um, Carbon citizenship laws are. <laughs> yeah, I think it, you have to actually be of Carbon. But it's interesting that Teravangian says preserve only Carbon. So that's mm-hmm. yeah. that's just a, that's but what's that's called not a keyword. What? Odium said. Odium says. So it's like, I think the intent 
behind <laughs> the deal yeah. is that protect him from the actions of odium. Mm-hmm. Not yeah. Generic. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Like if there's a tidal wave coming after Carbron, like I don't think odium <laughs> is obligated yeah. to protect them. Okay. Yeah. That's that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, but I definitely still like the idea of some loophole in there and them exploiting it mm-hmm. because I just can't see what it would be right now. Mm-hmm. Like forcing odium's views to attack carbranth like Mm -hmm. you could come up with some complicated scenario cultivation's Mm -hmm. very good at complicated (laughs) uh, unlikely scenarios i mean technically we have some views on our side now yeah yeah we have leshly loosely loosely i was wondering how like all that listener stuff if that will if they will even be relevant in book five because we have 10 (laughs) days right they're on the Shattered Plains, like, they're kind of far from Narak. That that might just be, like, a back five thing where we see a bunch of Will Shaper listeners, and it's like, oh, that's sweet. But, I, I mean, they could receive the sailors on an infinite sea because they're on the <laughs> East Coast. <laughs> yes. They're, they're in the East, come from the origin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. For signing. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so, regarding Teravangian, like, talking with people he was connected to, right? Like... Mm-hmm. He would have mm-hmm. a connection with Adratagia, so I yeah, feel like that would sure. be possible. I'm very curious how he will interact with the Fused. Like, we get only very slight hints with L, right? Oh. And L knows that it's newest Odium, so presumably, like, the Nine probably know of this, right? Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. They, they would probably instantly know that, like, Trouble. this is different. Uh, yeah. I, I want to know what that relationship's like. Like, that's just so... Interesting. I mean, L L seems is different from the fused in that he actually seems to like humans. Yeah, he studies their art mm-hmm. and like mm. his rhythms were taken away because he said, "I want to like we shouldn't kill them. We should use them." Mm-hmm. And you know the other singers and apparently like race were like, "No, nah, I'm gonna take your rhythms and your title as punishment for suggesting that." Oh, that, that could be more of a thing that the Nine did, right? Because. Like, race obviously has an affinity towards humans. <laughs> like, yeah. at the end of Oathbreaker makes that very clear. And Taraj is like, what the hell? Following a human? Race is like, I don't care about that. Could, mm-hmm. Do the nine even have the power to, like, take someone's rhythms? Yeah. As opposed, it just seems like something yeah. like Odium would have to, or maybe one of the Unmade would have to get yeah. involved with him. Sure. I, I, I think it has to be Odium that did it. But maybe at, like, the I, I think it's, the nine. it's less that, like, L, like, wanted to use the humans in more eldified odium like mm. i don't like you I like you doing that you should do what i say punish that that does seem like <laughs> yeah that's a very race yeah. thing there for mm-hmm. sure l showed too much passion <laughs> <laughs> the Long and the passion. the race side of odium took over and was like no i need obedience mm. yeah so by that logic grace would odium not tell like other singers <laughs> about about this i wouldn't if i think if there's a way to hide it from like the fused i feel like teravangian might like because i think i think if the nine knew that the new odium like was just a human mm-hmm. who are there like fighting against and hate and have spent like seven thousand years fighting against then i think that would cause problems i think that would cause yeah. problems mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like did they know race was a human? Hmm. That that's actually a good question. Actually, they yeah. knew he was the human's god originally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they okay. did know that. Yeah. So I would assume so. Oh. Hmm. Though, like, how much do they understand about shards? Like, do well, they yeah, understand that there is like, there was an entity who became Odium? They do know. No, uh, some of them know Hoyt. So I could imagine that Hoyt. Just told them about. Yeah, I think they would know some. Well. They would certainly yeah. know some details. Yeah, mm-hmm. like Raboni will seem to be pretty under. She kind of knows what's going on. Yeah, mm-hmm. like they know of Adonisium at least. Yeah, I think definitely that's one of true. Them, so that, no, that that yeah, they would know probably that he is a human or was mm-hmm. a human. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, they they still gave yeah. the fused power to fight. Uh, against mm-hmm. the people they hated. Yeah, I think there's a difference between 
a human from thousands of years ago who gave us power and a human who just killed our god that like a human who was just one of the people we were fighting against who killed our god and took the power for himself Mm -hmm. technically Teravision was an ally (laughs) technically (laughs) I I don't think most of the fused care about that Uh, yeah I I would agree with that they probably do not care Mm -hmm. I'd have to reread the nine scene, but like they didn't talk very highly of Tervention there, I think. And they like because yeah, they true, talk yeah. about how he gave them information. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So. They're like, ah, oh, that's that's our that's our tool. Mm-hmm. I'm almost wondering if eventually Teravangian will elevate New Fused. Because Leshwi or was it Leshwi or Raboniel? One of the two was talking with Venli. That um, it was Draponial. It was Draponial, and was saying, "Hey, yeah, uh, you you definitely have this ambition, but you know, Odium's never done this ever again, right? Which is mm-hmm. really interesting. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't need to be the case anymore. Like new mm-hmm. new Odium, very much <laughs> could. I think if anything, I wouldn't be surprised if Teravangian started if he can, like taking." them away i don't know how much power he has over this but if he can just like take his investiture from the fused and start like killing the old fused that are no longer of use to him i think if he elevates new fused he might actually go for like advertatia and like ex diagram members because like he knows they'd be willing to die for him more or less so yeah maybe he do something like that because we know now mm. now know that at least humans becoming fused is an option. Yeah, like, apparently it's an option. Yeah. It's just like, hey, Dalnar, you're gonna become yeah. a fused and rampage around the Cosmere for me. Okay, great. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do think it's very plausible for Teravodium to become to to elevate new fused. I think Race didn't because Race didn't like investing in. It's like yeah. Mm-hmm. It, like the fact that he got stuck on Moshar, like, it was a blunder. Yeah. yeah. So it's like he didn't want to like continue investing people because that's just like tying him more and more, mm. limiting his power. I don't think he could take back the investiture that makes up the fused. I don't think so either. Like, like you can't yeah. take back breath you give someone else. Like, he would have to like theoretically he could just like unmake the fused. But that's probably more of an ordeal. Like he needs to like have his hands on him. So it's like Leshwi like can't just automatically revoke yeah. her like cognitive shadow status. Like it's mm-hmm. he would need to get her, his hands on her. I think I think even though from an aspect of a shard agreement standpoint, we don't know what agreement Odium made with the fused. Yeah. But True. like I think just purely at that level. The deal was clearly, you're going to be immortal, and I am giving you this power to persist, uh, right? Like, I, I'm just yeah. reminded of, like, what Laris did with Kelsier, right? I was just thinking, though, didn't, didn't Odie, or didn't race at, like, the end of it with bringing a threaten to take the power from someone, though? Oh, I that thought? is true, yeah. The, right. he, did, he did threaten to mm-hmm. revoke that which gave Turash uh, life, something like that. Yes talking about Dalnar, not wanting to be under <laughs> Dalnar or, uh, mm-hmm. there. Yeah. And, and that's true. In that case, they were both right there. Like, I think Odium mm-hmm. could have done it there through any number of me, but it's fews that are hiding from him mm-hmm. he has more difficult with. Yeah. Okay. And maybe he, he could also, like, he couldn't completely, like, destroy the fuse or take away the cognitive shadow status. Maybe he just meant that, okay, I can take away your body and not have you reincarnate through the Everstorm. Maybe we just block that as well. What, what does Odium say about Turash? <laughs> let's, let's look. I remember that fuse name. Hey, totally unrelated, <laughs> but, uh... What are the Tissark? I, w- I still want to know. Yes. What are the freaking Tissark that's not oh. one of the brands of Fused? I'm still upset about this, Brandon. I want answers about what the Tissark are, okay? Please. <laughs> I-, I imagine in book five, we're going to get a lot of, a lot more unmade stuff, a lot more big battles. Like I, I think so. The unmade kind of took a backseat this book. Yeah. Yeah. But with 
Shallan's plot being, I will hunt down Ba Edo Mishram's prison. And there being an unmade in Shinovar, it's kind, mm-hmm. of, it's kind of right there baked into the plot. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I, I'm very curious to see how Siana yeah. handles newest Odium. Oh, yeah. And yeah, so Odium's line is, you'll follow me, Tarash, or I will reclaim that which gives you persistent life. Okay. I care not for the shape of the tool, only that it cuts. That does sound more like he... He definitely Catch can. Just straight up, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. But the thing is, wouldn't you think that he would do that to, like, the insane fused if they're not useful? Yeah. Like, like the, the fact that he's not. Like, he just odd. doesn't care about that, really, at mm-hmm. all. So yeah. I feel like that's a threat that he could make good on, but he still doesn't like doing it for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. Or, like... I think they still could maybe renege on whatever original deal it was and be like a small hole in his soul. So like he could, mm-hmm. he totally could, but it would just have some problems. And maybe the fuse don't know all the specifics on what problems it would cause. <laughs> so they're like, yeah, okay, maybe I'll shut up now. All right, cool. Uh, that now makes me wonder, like, what does happen to Odium with, when like one of the fuse is killed with anti white light? Like, does he? If you kill enough fuse that way, does it significant or at least meaningfully hurt him in some way? I don't think so. So we have actually already recorded an episode on lights. Yeah. We do not feel... Uh, I, I remember in that podcast, which will come... I think it'll actually be next week's episode. Hey, <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure. I believe we decided that the investiture itself wasn't destroyed. Like, it's not permanently yeah, erased from the mm-hmm. Cosmere. So I don't think that yeah. that would be the case. And it'd just, like, regenerate eventually, like the mm-hmm. well and mm-hmm. all all that other yeah. crap. Similar to, like, the Adium. Yeah. It, it got burned mm-hmm. away, but it will return to... Yeah, right. right. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're going to be back on weekly podcasts now, I think. Uh, there, there might be some <laughs> uh, extra episodes, uh, but basically mm-hmm. weekly, because uh, I'm tired. This, this, is, this is a lot. There's a lot to talk about. Man, I'm terrified about book five. This is this is this is real bad. But there might be a problem I, with the fused in the relationship. Yeah, I, I think there are. I don't think the fused are going to be uniform in their reactions. Yeah, I agree. That's I really wish Raboniel could have lived because I wanted to. Yes. Watch her oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Ah, oh, Rip Raboniel. Like, presumably, like she had a fairly good relationship with Odium. Like mm-hmm. he gave her her own unique rhythms like mm. tell me more about that <laughs> yeah i i'm completely terrified for book five right because mm-hmm. i don't know if you guys felt the same way but odium did not really seem as powerful in this book after oathbringer you know no. i think teravangian even says when he takes up the power that he wasn't like yeah between mm-hmm. like uh all the things that have happened with like as far back as splintering honor binding himself to the system and then like dalinar refusing him mm-hmm. just everything built kind of built up and he he was weak mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and i think losing dalinar as his champion like screwed up all of his plans i mean which is why like yeah. in this one year like there was such a dramatic difference yeah, just thinking about how the battle of Thalen Field went if down our switch sides. <laughs> it's like mm-hmm. Calvin, Shalon, and Adolin are all dead because uh, the perpendicularity doesn't get opened and all this stuff was like, wow, mm-hmm. you got pretty royally screwed there, Odium. But from mm-hmm. a narrative standpoint, like I'm way more terrified about Teravangi and, and what his plans are. Oh, like, yeah. yeah, maybe the Fused will have some issues, but maybe... Maybe the fused, you know, they they maybe they weren't thrilled about race either, right? Like, I don't know. That's possible. Oh, that, clearly wasn't. Yeah, <laughs> like it, it's entirely possible that they might actually like a new odium who's like, mm-hmm. yeah, we're gonna mm-hmm. be decisive and act, and we're gonna end this. And they're like, cool, mm-hmm. great, I do want to do that. Actually, I'm not thrilled with this, the, like the situation. But you you do seem to be in our best interest, so cool. I mean, like for us readers, it's also good because like 
we now we know Terravention as a character already, so yeah. we know his motivations and stuff like that. But with race, it basically was what we learned from the letters and a few up things. But we it basically was an unknown, and now we can yeah. actually like yeah. see some of his like we could guess what Terravention might be up to. Yeah. yeah, which actually supports Dalinar's arc because it transitions yeah. like his foil like race was never like a great foil for dalinar because he he was a god like <laughs> there wasn't a i mean there was a personal connection there but yeah. like not yeah. in mm-hmm. that that we like whereas Teravangian, like they they were friends yeah friends they do like agree on some things and are fundamentally opposed on others so yeah. it's like Teravangian becoming odium like Dalinar's primary like opponent, mm-hmm. like that is fascinating. Yeah, it's yeah. it's perfect for Dalinar. So let let's let's try and get into the mind of the madman, <laughs> Teravangian's champion, for 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 the battle. What do you think? There there have Zeth. been Zeth. Yeah, you were saying Zeth. that on the last episode. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've seen the theory that it's Gavinor. I'm like, oh, I don't want that. It, it does appear in YouTube comments a lot uh, in mm-hmm. our first rhythm of our reactions. We haven't posted the second one I, yet, but I, I find Child Champion sort of unrealistic with like the 10 day uh, deadline. Like, mm-hmm. uh, assuming it goes forward as planned, then 10 days seems a little mm-hmm. short for me. Yeah, and you, you have to have a connection with. Uh, mm. Like it seems like the yeah. champion has to agree to it. Yes. Yeah. The champion must have intent to become. Yeah. Champion. Mm-hmm. But I genuinely have no idea who is. Yeah. Be. I've seen the theory that like he's going to choose himself and just like Aravangian mm-hmm. is going to appear on the top yeah. of Earth theory. <laughs> like, yo, you thought I was dead. I I was <laughs> definitely thinking. I, I was chatting with Jess and was saying, yeah, we could totally have a scene where Dalinar's at the top of your theory and Teravangian's there. And it's like, wait, what? Ter- uh, Odium saved you or something? And then that's not the reveal at all. Cause it's like, yeah, that's not exactly what happened here. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm not the champion. Uh, but just like giving Dalinar that total whiplash of Dalinar mm-hmm. thinking, oh man, do I have to, kill Teravangian I don't I never wanted to do that but then mm-hmm. I don't know I, I feel like that would be part of Teravangian's ploy to totally screw over Dalinar but I, I don't know if Teravangian would go himself like could could shards even do that themselves I don't know I Race. have long questioned why shards don't make bodies more often <laughs> uh, me too man me right. too I think if a race had tried it, it would have opened him up to a strike from cultivation. Yes. Teravangian mm, yep. might not have that problem because she seems cool with Teravangian <laughs> as <laughs> audio. It, it's kind of off topic, but it's such a good, like, what does cultivation feel about, like, the Battle of Champions? Is she going to even do anything? Like, I, like, what does she feel about that? Does she even care? I mean, the only, the only real stake right now is Dalinar, right? And and sort of like a left car and her dad's. Mm-hmm. For someone like cultivation, that might just not be enough for her to care. Like, hmm. yeah, it's like it's we don't know what her end goals are. Not like, at all. Like <laughs> both race and Teravangi and talk about this great threat in the Cosmere, the greater and war like, of the surges. Yeah, so it's like <sighs> does is cultivation just have her own plans for that and this is all just like pieces on a chessboard that are moving out or does she like no we need to deal with like this problem here on roshar it's like i don't know where her priorities lie yeah i feel like cultivation might not actually be all there after tanavas's death you know Mm -hmm. yeah like I mean, Wendell does say is like she doesn't care about humans anymore now that mm-hmm. he is gone. Yeah, I guess. Which makes sense because like yeah. she isn't human. 
So yeah, oh, well, that's that's true. Yeah, yeah, that, that's a really good point, actually. Yeah, mm-hmm. after Tandavas dies, yeah, it's like, ah, oh, this is my connection to the humans. Ah, screw these guys. These 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 mm-hmm. people suck. And I mean, I guess it's also a matter of how much uh, other shards can interfere in like agreements that yeah, um, another true. one made. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that could like open cultivation up if she added mm-hmm. too much to interfere. She has to be circumspect. Mm-hmm. It's your involvement. This is another cultivation thing, but do we think cultivation and endowment like plotted this whole Nightbloods thing together? Shards can clearly talk with each other, and that is not a problem. Like Harmony <laughs> seems to that doesn't seem to be an issue at all. I'm not sure if she was involved in the creation, mm-hmm. but maybe she had a hand in like it getting to Rosha and like endowment nudge things along there. Maybe. I don't think so. Because I don't think endowment would be okay with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because like endowment was very much like, no, like we will not, I will not interfere with what the other shards are doing. Well, ex- except dealing with Odium, he'll be done. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but presumably that letter would have been sent after this plan would have been enacted. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, wait, way out. Well, mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, <laughs> she probably and, does. And, have and a like plan. at that point in time, like she didn't think Odium was that big of a deal. It's like yeah. if he becomes a problem, he will be done mm-hmm. with. She wasn't concerned at that point in time. Mm. Yeah, she didn't seem particularly mm-hmm. concerned for sure. Yeah, and he will be dealt with doesn't necessarily mean like her working with other shows. Mm-hmm. I think. Nightblood could be like some sort of thing that endowment wanted to happen to mm-hmm. potentially deal with shards potential and in like a theoretical level. Mm-hmm. It's really crazy to just think that it's like, wow, race died. We 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 pulled Nightblood in into a vision <laughs> and stabbed race. Mm-hmm. Like, wow, a lot of things had to go right for that to work. And like this is why Brandon had to write Warbreaker. It's not just mm-hmm. backstory cameo for Vasher and this weird sword is like that weird sword is important. We did always yeah. think Nightblood was really important, and we weren't sure how that was going to be relevant on Rashar. The answer is killing race. There you go, mm-hmm. nailed it. Yep. Is it the final purpose of Nightblood and Rosha, or is there more of it in the future? Uh, yeah. I, I think it shows shard vessels of shards should not get anywhere near nightblood that is probably a really good idea to be very far away it's like hey if nightblood's there you know i'm not gonna move my nexus of power over there that sounds like a bad idea like with that wob any sane person will avoid nightblood yeah Mm -hmm. well race yeah race wasn't sane easy here ashar here's nightblood problem solved (laughs) and then ashar just it gets totally eaten up but ba- back to Teravangian's champion, yeah, I have, I have absolutely no idea what, yeah. like, it, but I know it's going to be bad. I think ca- main characters can absolutely die in book five. Yes. I think, I think they basically have to, like, at least some. I think more than one of Dalnar, Shalon, and Kaladin could die. In I think, I think Zeth is probably going to die. He's the yeah. one where I'm like, yeah. 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 He's expendable. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was. I, mean, I, yeah. I think uh, Seth was most ease on would be the most willing to give himself into death. Mm-hmm. Just, like, <laughs> he has wanted that for a while. For yeah. Sure. So I think I think the ones most likely to survive are like Shalon and Adolin becoming world hoppers. Oh, that is awesome. Yeah. I'd love to see this. I, yeah. But I could see Adolin sacrificing himself. <laughs> I'm like, I don't yeah. want it to happen, oh. but I, it's plausible. A lot of people have been talking about Adolin being the champion for Odium. He wouldn't agree to it. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't think so. I think, I think this He's is good the same like, line <laughs> of uh, Adolin does have a dark side, and that's true, mm-hmm. Yeah, but I think his heart He's- is in the right place. He's not um, quite that angry at Dalinar yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he he obviously Dalinar, cares like, about Yurithiru, the Radiance, yeah. uh, Alethkar, and things like that. If if Dalinar like accidentally killed a Renarin or something, like <laughs> God. 
Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, I don't think Renarin, Renarin can't die. Renarin cannot I, I, die. I don't, no. I don't think Renarin no. will die, but I'm saying, like, if if, Adel, if something happened and Dalinar, like, also accidentally killed Adolin's brother, then, <laughs> yeah. then maybe would turn to Odin. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Renarin can't die, otherwise we would get no more Brandon books. Because Brandon would be dead. <laughs> no, no. Because it rather <laughs> no. <be> dead. <laughs> 17 Shard does not <laughs> condone violence against the author. No. But, uh, but Renarin's obviously going to be related to the Void Binding stuff and is very important. So, like, of all the characters who are not going to die, Lyft is not going to die and Renarin is not going to die. Like, mm-hmm. neither of those two characters are going to die. Because, like, I want to see Renarin being a total badass 15 years from now, just, like, yep. in the back five. Like, he, he has all of his agency. Like, he doesn't need... Dalinar's approval for anything is just a badass. It sounds awesome. With Relaine, of course. With Relaine, of course. Yes, 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 of yeah. course. Yeah. That's a podcast. It'll be like our, our second singer <laughs> book when they're they're married and husbands, and so we'll get even more singer look. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's how we get the listeners back into the plus uh, <laughs> later. It's like, I feel like Dalinar. Yeah, do, do we think Dalinar's going to die? Book five? I think he's going to die, but he's not going to leave. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. It's like, kind of he's, either, die. he's either like going to ascend to honor. Okay. He might ascend to war. Oh, uh, like a combination of uh, honor and odium. Or he could be effused. I think <laughs> these are all very pl- plausible things that could happen. Dalinar just yeah. shows up in the Lost Metal. Hey, how's it going? I'm rampaging around the cause here. That probably wouldn't happen. That would kind of be a spoiler for Stormlight 5. Yeah. But <laughs> Yeah, that red mist you're seeing is it's actually Dalinar. <laughs> it's just, it's only Dalinar. We do probably need to talk about uh, the, the trail stuff post Rhythm of War. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because it does complicate matters uh, than mm-hmm. our yep. conception of it being autonomy. But mm-hmm. so, yeah, I, th- I think oh, those yeah. possibilities are are good for Dalinar, though. Uh, I yeah, I also I also think Dalinar gets stabbed by Napla to prevent himself from becoming a fused is possible. It's true. It's valid. Mm-hmm. That, that, yeah. And Seth gets eaten up in the process as well. So easy. Yeah. Great. <laughs> I could actually see that happening, you know, like Seth <laughs> does become Odin's champion and Yeah. It's like Zeth Zeth stabs it's it's a fight, uh, Zeth is Odium's champion, Dalinar's honor, Zeth stabs Dalinar with Nightblood, they both die. It's like, well, who yep. wins now? <laughs> <laughs> They're both yeah. dead. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who died first? Man, Dalinar dying really just like what who would even be able to make agreements on honor's behalf? Like, if Dalinar died, that is not good for the imprisonment of Odium. That's, not, that's like, not great. I mean, Odium would just be bound by whatever existing, like, yeah. if anything, it ensures, like, Odium won't get released. I guess that's true. Because there is no one able to negotiate a release. Mm-hmm. Wow. Tanavas' plan of making a bondsmith now seems extra dumb. Uh, <laughs> it's like, I don't know. But I guess you kind of do need the Bondsmith as well, because do- Tanavas clearly thinks that a contest of champions is the way to beat Odium, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Yes, he always thought that. Similar to Miss Bornera One spoilers, like Ruin had to be released from his prison in order to be dealt with. Like mm. he couldn't just stay imprisoned for forever. Yeah, I think Dalinar either dies or is removed in some manner, <laughs> as you describe. <laughs> Uh, what, 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 what about Calden? Do we think he's gonna die? Book five with the sodium stuff. Let's 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 place some wagers. Oh, so I'm tough. gonna say mm-hmm. yes. Calden does die. I yeah, but I can't quite say why I think that. But like, I I, I don't feel like he'd be around for the back five anymore, just because. Hmm. He could be around as like the mentor figure for someone, but <laughs> he's tough. Who else is going to train Odin? By the way. <laughs> but I, I mean, I guess he could also just be a therapist at that point. And, like, He's a therapist. Yeah. yeah. It's like, I want Ka- Kaladin to have a happy ending. Mm-hmm. I, could, 
it is plausible because like his whole story arc is like he dies well he survives when everyone else dies mm-hmm. so like, like the, the mirror of like oh. he dies so everyone can live oh, oh i was gonna say like so okay. the end of book five is like literally everyone except kaladin dying oh no that's too painful <laughs> that's too painful look i did the big five is yeah. just yeah. It's like the, the ending part. of book. The ending is hidden in book one. Uh, Kaladin <laughs> saying everyone around him dies and he manages to live. That's that's the ending of Stormlight. Ouch. And the big five is just him and the his space whales going around with the Harry. <laughs> so like, <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> ten out of ten. Lift and Renard are there too, and Yasna. <laughs> they're, they're, they're riding space whales. They're they're yeah. the cognitive uh, Lancerin, right? Easy. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Nailed it. Um, so Mandra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I do like that mirror uh, that Calvin mm-hmm. dies to I save everyone. It. No, I but it's good. It so he much. dies. He dies to protect everyone. That's solid. That's solid. I don't want Shalon and Adolin to die because I think both Shalon yeah. has Cosmere stuff to do, and Adolin. If Dalinar is out of the picture, Adolin's like in charge, right? Kinda. And so seeing Adolin not being under Dalinar's shadow and just being mm-hmm. like a, a badass leader uh, and seeing how he is his own leader, I think would be very mm-hmm. interesting. I would be so down for that. So I don't want either of them to die. Mm-hmm. No, Adolin, Adolin and Shala need to like move to Silverlight and opening, open yeah. a floor. floor. <laughs> yeah, but would... And that's, that's just their, their future. But would Adolin yeah, leave, Shalane. though? Shalon would world hop. But like they'd come yeah. back. I mean, Adolin and Maya can have the clothes shop together, and Shalan's like the natural scientist who comes yep. back occasionally. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I like Dalnar and Calden dying. Maybe they both die. <laughs> That's solid. That's solid. I like this. This is good. This is good. This is quality. Like I've always thought. Book five is always going to end badly for our heroes. You, you guys all, all know right. I've been saying this for a long time, like long, mm-hmm. long before even Oathbringer. Like I was like, okay. wow, this is going to be bad. Yeah. Here's an idea. Uh-huh. Uh huh. It's like the, not many main characters die, but cultivation does. Whoa! Damn! Oh. Whoa! That's a take. Like it just book five just ends with uh Teravindian <laughs> figuring out how to like split uh splinter splinter cultivation. Oh my god! I mean, there is the like theory going around now that like cultivation's plan is exactly like we have lift, Dalena and Tervention and like Tervention for Odium, Dalena for Honor, and then Lift for herself. <laughs> mm-hmm. So maybe I feel like there's just I, so much cultivation left to explore though, mm, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, honest, I yeah. feel like she's going to be like back half material yeah, and like right? her plans really yeah. unfold, I feel. Do we think there was a lot more with race? Like, I was wondering what was going on with race and Moash. Like, how Moash will be involved with t- <laughs> Terravagian. It's like, I don't know what's going to happen there. But, like, that's probably my big thread there with race. That I'm like, I want to know what's up there. Mm-hmm. I mean, Moash did work for the diagram. Mm-hmm. Hey, hey, <laughs> that's true. That's true, technically. 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 Technically true. Until... Technically. A very short period of time. <laughs> it does make it seem like Teravangian is going to be very much undercover. Maybe just letting a few fews know. If that. Um, yeah. Because it clearly, when he talks as Odium, <laughs> it is a noticeable difference. <laughs> yeah. Like So he's got to be really careful here. Mm-hmm. I don't think Cultivation's gonna die. Like, I, I would be re- actually upset if Cultivation died, mm-hmm. right? Like, race just... Mm-hmm. We, we have a new threat now, and the new threat really matches the constant Dalinar versus Teravangian philosophical struggles, and, like, that is going to happen in Book 5, right? For sure. Yeah. Uh, but Cultivation... Cultu- yeah. Cultivation dies... And odium takes up cultivation. Oh my god, <laughs> that's terrifying. Yeah, I think I don't think Teravangian will have the same qualms about picking up no. other shards. Yep. No. Oh, that's a. Ooh, that's a really good point. Teravangian would have no issue. Oh my god, he'd probably actually really like cultivation. He's probably like, mm-hmm. active. Like of all the shards, oh, I feel no. like that's one. Cult- 
or the uh, Terra Vengeance <laughs> would want. Oh yeah, no. and I mean that he has a connection to cultivation. Of... <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that sort of would also get rid of like the problem he basically has with harmony because then he'd be on an equal power level at at the very least. Oh like, man, he ha- he would have the skill then. And those are an odium. Oh man, I. <laughs> Grace, you're good at just blowing my mind. Because <laughs> it's like, yeah, you're totally right. Race doesn't want... Maybe race didn't want other shards because race is already having so much problems with his shard mm-hmm. that he's like, I don't want to be pulled in another direction like this. Like, he he also likes Odium. Like, he liked yeah. it. But there were clearly some problems. But Teravangian, mm-hmm. it is totally plausible that Teravangian's new plan is well, let's kill the other vessels and let I will become Aiden Alcium. Because he would. He would love to be the god of the Cosmere to take everyone's mm-hmm. burdens onto himself. He would do that. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I, I mean, right now he only knows what Wraith, uh, Wraith thought of the other vessels. And that he apparently thought they were all, all were fools. So Yeah, yeah, he did think they were uh, has... ruled by f- fools. Mm-hmm. And... So if he if Tevention doesn't end, like, I don't think he'd end up talking to the other shards much. So oh, yeah. with that in mind, he'd like, okay, I have to kill them because they're all incapable of saving people. I, I don't fully agree with that. I think Teravangian will reach out to the other shards. I think he will 100% play the part of like, Oh, I'm just an old man who was ruled he's, by my emotions. He's very practiced. He just happened okay. to stumble into yeah. this because of Cultivation's plot. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> to, Please come free me. <laughs> to, to be fair, though, if there's one role that Teravagian's very good at, it is exactly that one. He is a very, yeah. very yeah. good at it. Uh, mm-hmm. The line is... Uh, so... Teravangian knew the Cosmere was in chaos, ruled by fu- fools, presided over by broken gods. Mm. Yikes. Oh, that, yeah, that's just, good, though, Grace. I like that. I'm just imagining Teravangian no, reaching, reaching out to Harmony. I feel like I <laughs> oh, maybe, no. maybe Stasis would be, be like, could determine that it's fake, but like playing the part of like, I like talking philosophy too, and I'm also a new <laughs> god. We're in a similar oh, position. Let's be god friends. Ship like, and I don't a rip know. And to Harmony. Let's go. <laughs> Boom. Yeah, I don't think <laughs> Sazed would, I think, pick up on what's going on, like, or at mm. least. And would probably go along with it to like have an idea, but like I don't think he would be fooled for long. Especially because Harmony does agree that mm-hmm. Odium yeah. is the most dangerous of the shards, and he's clearly worried about a vessel's craftiness. So Terrangian would need to be so de- careful reaching out to other shards, right? Yeah, because yeah. with the, the expanded m- mental faculties, like you just have so many advantages whereas like trolling mortals is super easy by comparison <laughs> by comparison uh, you can you can get cultivation to vouch for him <laughs> so d- do we want to talk about the greater war of the surges <laughs> cuz that sure. that seems that seems like uh, this seems like foreshadowing for th- big cosmere stuff in the future that's not even stormlight yeah. like i i think it has to deal with like the conflict between Fane life and Troon life. Like, I, I, oh. I think that is the greater war of the Cosmere. Yeah, but like, like Race is saying that he was, Roshar was a training ground for the greater war of the Surges, which also mm-hmm. just sounds like a terrible plan, honestly, to have these mm-hmm. views. Like, the, this doesn't seem good. But regardless, mm-hmm. we see in Dawn Shard that Surge Binding is generic Cosmere magic stuff <laughs> that, like, or at least in that context. Surge binding is just like, hey, we're doing magic. Um, yeah, it, it's Rosharin's sucking mm-hmm. and things, and yeah, <laughs> calling everything. The There's same spread. Thing. Everything's surge binding. Everything's a spread. So it's like the war of the surges. I don't think has anything to actually do with. Oh yeah, no. yeah, but just generic. Mm, the the I, I think of cultures. The war for the fate of the Cosmere. Like mm-hmm. I think that's all this is saying. Mm. I don't think Teravangian's gonna die, guys. I don't think so. I think we need no. like a good we need long-term villains and we we killed another original vessel who is like 
the evilest, I guess, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) And so for the rest of the Cosmere, we kind of need more villains. Greater war. Race, your plan is really bad, though. Can can we just like, like real talk? The fuse are not doing well. Like they are not ready for thousands of years of more combat. Well, I I don't think that was the fuse were not his plan. Like yeah. he was training the humans to be. I guess that's true. Right. Yeah. That is true. And I, I guess he trained the humans over millennia to fight against like immortal enemies, more or less. Mm-hmm. So that's a rather good preparation for fighting other magic users. I guess that's true. So. Yeah, that's scary. <laughs> I'm not, I'm just more confused as to like book five. Even though like we we know a lot of where the plot is going because like we kind of know where each character is going except like mm-hmm. Dalinar just like I guess you'll just fart around in your theory for like a while. <laughs> I don't know. Wait, I don't know. But like we know. All right, we're going to Shinovar. Shalon's going for, after Badamishram. All right, and Ghost Bloody like fighting against Ghost Bloods. All right, that that all makes sense. But like back five. Like, Teravangian is just such a wild card that, like, everything is on the table now. Just so many different things could happen. Mm-hmm. And, like, so many things could happen after Stormlight. That's like, <laughs> oh, hey, what's up? Ooh, okay, here's a question. What do okay. you think autonomy feels about race dying? Because it seemed like, I mean, Hoyt had his grudge against race and Bavadin. Mm-hmm. But... I mean, it seems plausible that they could be working together, though we don't know for sure, right? But, like, that's, like, a super common theory, that they were working mm-hmm. together in some respect. Yeah. Okay, here's here's an idea. Okay. So I think, what if what if Bavadin, they were working together, and Bavadin was, like, the brains of the operation? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it was race. Uh, yeah. I think as we've seen, not the not the best plans necessarily. <laughs> so it's true. It's so Bavadin has this like it's like plotting and it's like, okay, like race and odium is someone that I can use and I can he he Whoa. wants to be the only only shard, so I can point him to people that I want gone. And mm-hmm. sort of sit behind the scenes, let him do the work, let him take the focus, and let him take all of the other shards' worries. Whereas where I kind of you know, go out here and secretly start creating avatars, um, plotting, like expanding my power without them, without the other shards, like seeing that and immediately getting worried. Mm-hmm. You, you know why I like that, Grace? Why? It, autonomy being the brains of the operation is because she has so many brains with so many different <laughs> avatars. So it works. It works really good. Mm-hmm. But no, no, no. I, I like that. So maybe we mm-hmm. can get autonomy Teravangian conflict, right? Mm-hmm. Because... Yeah. Uh, Teravangian's clearly possible. He can plot just fine. He does. He doesn't need help with that. I I always love like villain speed chess plotting against each other. So I'm like really <laughs> yeah. hoping that that's something that we can see between those two shards. Ooh, that's spicy. And it kind of really makes me hope. Like, it really makes me hope that Teravangian stays in charge and. Like because a common theory also is that like Odin will be dealt with in Stormlight and he'll be gone. But I feel like if he d- does come into conflict with uh, autonomy, that might be like a greater conflict for like space space age stuff. Even that'd be cool. <laughs> yeah, I thought you were gonna say the the common theory of that Odium's dealt with in Book Five, which I do not agree with at all. Oh. Uh, but yeah. uh, but like yeah. maybe end of Stormlight, I can see that being plausible. Mm-hmm. But like that would maybe open up, like we would need to see Teravangian wage war against the Cosmere. Like that's what I want to see <laughs> with this now, <laughs> yes. right? Like, and I mean, Shalon could be a world hopper in, in the future. Yeah. So we Shalon could be like going to other planets, like trying to fight against Odium as Odium spreads his influence once more. I've always been a proponent of the idea that autonomy and the avatars were going to be like the main villain of era four but mm. i think teravangian now complicates that and i don't know what i think anymore <laughs> God, there's so much that needs to happen and because there's so many shards too like what's going on mm. with all those shards like what's, yeah. what's up with mercy what's up with mercy <laughs> what's up with all the other shards like, oh yes like, because we know like in the the ambition being killed mercy yeah. was involved yes 
So I wonder what happens when Tavenger now reaches out to them. And like, we, because we don't know if they were on Odium side or were like a neutral party or on ambition, ambition side, mm -hmm. but like there's potential for stuff to happen there. Like yeah. Mercy maybe thinks like, oh, we are old allies, but Tavenger actually is like, nope, new guy going to do everything differently. Tervangian would at least know, right? He he's gonna mm -hmm. know yeah. who he fought against yeah. the power. Yeah. Well, with Tervangian's mindset, Mercy might be assured that he is a very interested in. Yikes! Mega yep. yikes! <laughs> well, I I think it depends on if their alliances were they gentlemen's agreements or were was it a formal oath? Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of those, like Tervangian, would be bound by. Yeah. The other, mm -hmm. all bets are off. I mean, given what Race got into on Rosha, I, f I feel inclined to say that they were binding oath because he was the greatest planner. So yeah, we will get to see more of uh, of Race in back five in like Harold flashbacks and stuff, right? Yeah. Like with with Ishar being the the one Odium tempted first. Mm -hmm. What the hell's up with that? But uh, and we'll, we'll get more of him in Hoyt's backstory. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. True. They used to be friends. Mm -hmm. uh, I think in the second reaction episode, we we were saying how that Hoyt and Race were friends because they had uh, a mind for the theatrics of things. <laughs> I was like, I do kind of like <laughs> that because because Race very much is like, no, I want to win, and everyone bows down to me. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. and it's just every no, 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 no. I, I won, and I want everyone to know <laughs> this is a show. Whereas Teravangian has no issue with that; like he does not care about that at all. He he will win at all costs. So we're gonna break for a quick ad from our sponsor. This week's sponsor. Oh, we should we should go into this mode. This week's sponsor is Odie Yum, the new oh, breakfast God. cereal from the god of hatred and passion. Everyone knows sugar brings out people's biggest passions, so this cereal is made exclusively with sugar and racium, or teravangium yum, or Odie Yum yum. Odie Yum also may conduct investiture, so you got you got to worry about that. So it's that, made with go. raisins. <laughs> <laughs> there we go that's so i just want to say uh -huh. i reminded eric that he had a yes that's true that's true that's true ad yes. break. and i said i'm going to regret this do you regret it? <laughs> and i do don't worry don't worry i have i've been planning I've this been, for a long time i think that is the best ad break yet yeah yeah, yeah. i still like bottom Ishram's misconnections that was good we, we haven't done a fake ad break in a long time <laughs> no, it's been great. Yeah, it it has. It has. It was good. <laughs> You're welcome, everyone. So Some, someone Photoshop a better breakfast cereal called Odie Yum. Uh I'll I'll have a crappy one photoshopped for you, but it won't be good. Alright. So we didn't talk about one thing though. We we didn't talk about the the epilogue. So we should probably talk about the epilogue with uh yeah. Teravangian and uh Wit where Wit gets Wit's get he gets screwed over. That's what that's what mm -hmm. happens and that is I don't, not I don't great. remember that. They just had a normal conversation. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. It's totally <laughs> fine. This happened just as yeah. quite expected. So Odium is like, hey, I can't harm you, but he, but Hoyd used this investiture to store memories, uh, the mm -hmm. the breath, right? Which is very interesting. Uh, Hoyd just using <laughs> the breaths to store memories, um, yep. but Odium can see into those breaths, and Teravangian's like, I don't think this will cause you harm. Yes, my predecessor's agreements will allow me to, and then Teravangian erases the first instance of that conversation. Does design know what happened? Like, I she left. Be she'll be uh, able to like confirm that like mm. something weird happened. Because mm. yeah. he's like, because Hoyt comments like, wasn't design just here? Yeah, mm. and like there were other spread around. Mm. So I think if they have a decent conversation, they'll be able to figure something happened. So what? What? What so, do you think Odium did? 
I think he did what Ruin does when he changes what's in Metal Minds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But what I find weird about that is because like we I think we have it confirmed that Ruin could only change it like in the process of the transfer. He couldn't actually change it in the Metal Mind. That is true. That is, yeah, that is true. Yeah, he yes. could only yes. affect yeah, the process. So that is what I find weird about this. Like either it functions differently than a copper mind does, or I don't know, like because the investiture or like the breath are more in the physical, they are more easy to affect or something like that, maybe? Well, there there are a few mechanical differences with what Ruin was doing and what Odium is doing here. Like Ruin was imprisoned, yeah. so he was significantly weaker in like what he could actually affect. Like he couldn't move around and like directly yeah. interact with a thing. He probably could, after being free, do a lot more that we just didn't see him doing. Yeah. And sure. uh, we also know Ruin could uh, adjust words on like pages and stuff because it ruin created scadriel along with preservation True, and yeah. so odium cannot do that but mm -hmm. yeah uh i think odium could alter things uh mm -hmm. a bit or like wit is just worried that odium could destroy the breaths straight up which that that seems plausible that they could yeah. do I was gonna say a little later. Doesn't Wit make a comment about like perfect pitch mm -hmm. in the yeah. second in the second time he's telling the story? Or yeah, he says something about uh, he uh, the perfect pitch is off or something. Uh, Dirty Tricks is a great name for this epilogue, by the way. I, <laughs> oh, yeah. As we're, <laughs> we're 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 quickly rereading, it's like oh, Dirty Tricks. Yeah, that is. Very good name. Wit stared around himself, but then felt something, a tingling that made his breaths go wild. That oh, I think is, is the life odium. sense going on. For mm -hmm. Odium, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like at the very end, he says like, uh, then spun and continued on his way. He tried to find a tune to whistle, but each one sounded wrong. Something was messing, messing with Ooh, his perfect Something pitch. was fiddling with his perfect oh, pitch. fiddling. Oh, interesting. Also, I like how it's fiddling, you know, mm -hmm. music. Uh, but <laughs> it's a good word choice. Mm. Odium's yeah. Perfect. Yeah, because yeah, it doesn't say he's lost perfect pitch. But that something's wrong. Something's wrong with it. So we now know how uh, when Vesha took away that child's memory, yes, the breath oh boy. briefly it briefly flickered. It, it like, did briefly it flicker, yes. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it has to be a similar mechanism in like, yeah. Yeah. memory stuff with breath. So, yeah. yeah, maybe it's like the breath flickering that's affecting his perfect pitch, so to speak. Mm. I'm worried about by the fact that o Tervingian can see, like, I can't see your mind, but I can see these. So, like, he fiddled with something, but also Tervingian now has that knowledge, I guess? Mm -hmm. That's not, yeah. that's really bad, because whatever cultivation, presumably cultivation isn't just gonna tell Tervingian everything, <laughs> right? Like, that's, yeah. Tervingian, or, sorry, cultivation is way smarter than that. Uh, mm -hmm. So, like, Teravingian learning things on his own is quite dangerous for cultivation, for whatever plans mm -hmm. she's trying to do, right? Yeah. Yeah. And what I also found interesting about it is that, uh, like, Odium or Teravingian could only fiddle with the breath, not with his mind. So yeah. he apparently immediately stored away the memories of their encounter into the breath. Because like, he didn't remember the encounter uh, afterwards. I think the breaths are kind of acting like as an external hard drive. Mm. That that's always plugged mm, in. Yeah, yeah. So it's like oh, it's okay. Outside, oh. But it's yeah, still okay. like actively tra transmitting back and forth, as oh. opposed mm -hmm. to in, um, yeah, okay, it's, a yeah. metal mine, which is more like a flash drive that disconnects. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, that is uh, the mechanics of that is actually really weird, uh, Marvin. Because like I, I felt that maybe Odium could do a little bit of manipulation on Hoyd's minds. I don't know. Well, it, it, maybe he could have like fed something into his mind, sort of, to override what happened through the breath. 
I just don't know how mechanically with Awakening you could have it be like a live feed like that, Ian. Like, I like that yeah. idea. Like, Hoyd would figure something out like that, but... Well, yeah, I don't think that is necessarily Awakening. Sure, I, sure, sure, sure. I think he's figured out a way to use investiture to stir or memories externally. Sure. Like, I don't think it's a function of it being breath. I think it's a function of it oh, being okay. an investiture sure, he sure, is sure. fully. And it's just breath is very sticky and is mm, useful convenient. to store. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's really interesting because I guess in my initial read, I thought that Odium had like though Odium cannot read Hoyd's mind, he could make an alteration of it. But which is that's pretty OP. Cultivation was able to erase. Or like prune away, yeah, some of Dalinar's memories. But well, that but didn't... that was also with Dalinar's permission. Yeah, that was with his permission, yeah. and like she says, like this will not be permanent. Mm. Which I wonder if that's not because like she didn't want it to be permanent, or if that's a like I can do this, but like your spirit web is going to repair. Like these will grow back no matter what I want. So it's like maybe Odium could have like reached in and like ripped out some memories but it wouldn't be permanent i mean that would be like all from teravangian's perspective all teravangian needs is for it to last 10 days right <laughs> like like yeah. if it la if if he remembers day 12 that yeah. is not a problem right uh but yeah. It even but, but we don't know how long it would take to regenerate right like yeah because like this is also hoid who is like <laughs> not dalinar yeah. not a vanilla mortal like, but it's also a lot less memories cut out as well so like it that could make it grow back faster yeah but, we don't know. but if hoid does remember that there's uh this weirdness going on right mm -hmm he still wouldn't know what Odium manipulated in the breaths, right? Like, that's, that's no, the thing. Like, I, I think the way it was done, like, Hoyt might be able to tell that, like, something went down. He's mm -hmm. not going to be able to remember what actually mm -hmm. went down. Yeah. It's like, he's going to be able to notice the hole. He's not going to be, know what filled it. Mm -hmm. it. It does seem just really overpowered to have shards uh, allow people to directly manipulate minds. Like, mm -hmm. that's really scary. And, like, the context of the entire paragraph is... Uh, Teravangian is talking about uh, the, the memories and is like, ah, I don't think this will cause you actual harm. And then it's just like, then we immediately get that scene uh, again. So, hmm, maybe he is... Maybe I like your original idea better. Maybe just because directly manipulating Hoyt's mind is way even more terrifying. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, this could be some long-term damage that Hoyt has gotten for, like, a long time. Terv Odium's not going to do this again. Like, he... The surprise was the important part. Uh, mm -hmm. And Teravangian did make a mistake there. But whatever Odium manipulated in his memories, like, just the knowledge itself, terrifying. But the memories, <laughs> like, if, if Odium could adjust them, that's, 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 that's scary. Well, he wasn't able to adjust them. He just whited out what would, happened. Oh, sorry. I he was. Dele he yeah. deleted the memories. He didn't change the memory. I think it's possible he could have changed some memories. Like, he could have altered a lot of things in the breath. Like, that, I thought that's what Paleo was originally saying. It was like, oh, yeah, I did. They had the same thing Ruin does do. Uh, not just, mm, like, Ruin did slight alterations to screw with people, mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. just, like, deletions, right? Because deletions are mm -hmm. easy uh, to deal with. Granted, th this isn't a long scene that he's deleting, so, like, that that's easier. But I think it's possible that Odium uh, subtly adapted a lot of memories, and Hoyt's not going to recognize that for a long time. It's, that, it's not the impression I get from the scene. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with Ian here. Mm. Yeah, it, it seems very clear, like, 
he erases the memories and then just has a redo of the conversation. Yeah. There, there really isn't any indication that more is going on. But, like, this in and of itself is terrifying. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, that's less terrifying than I thought, because I, I, <laughs> I thought there could have been subtle manipulations, but just Odium having, re- reading those memories mm-hmm. is a lot of useful information there. Mm-hmm. And, like, just what Wit's plans are, even, right? Mm-hmm. That's, that's, that's bad news. I do always love when we get a chance to talk about that girl who with her memories are It's always a good time. It's always a good time when we still don't know what's going on with that. It's like, oh, let's talk about this one scene and like this two paragraphs and more breaker. It's always good. If you don't remember, uh, we did an Awakening podcast. We talked all about it. Um, okay. Well, I'm I'm less worried if if that's if that's how you're reading it, Ian. That that that's 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 good. There are some subtle changes between what Hoyt says the first and the second mm-hmm. time, which yeah. might mm-hmm. lead some credence to the idea that there were more changes. Mm-hmm. I mean, we technically don't know how much time has passed since we he, have no idea what, how when, much time when, passed. when he changed this. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. you might just, I mean, I guess technically time isn't really important to Schatz as Not such, really. but uh, mm-hmm. he could have taken his sweet time, like just doing, oh, let's look at these memories a bit more and yeah i think it's i i'm not gonna be surprised if memories were changed is what i'm saying yeah <laughs> like th- this is very plausible at least yeah i think that the two <laughs> things that change in his story are um he goes from like there aren't enough horses for that to you'll need you to wash your hands afterwards and then there's also a joke about sense that he no longer says like dollars and cents which they don't have on roshar like as for like his words being different the second time round, i think the mere fact that there were things that were different like design not being there was yeah. enough to throw him off yeah 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 yeah. 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 so it's and, like and he, slight changes are plausible yeah and he doesn't do that sense thing because he then notices the coin he has so uh, like he is still holding yeah. so it's just He's just trading off there. But I definitely find it not unlikely that he altered something in the memories. Yeah. Even just subtle changes. Oh, this is so bad. This is I, really- I would not be surprised to learn either one. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. I think yeah. where I'm yeah. at. Yeah. 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 Hoyd versus race. Like, what could the... That's that's just been the whole thrust of all the letters, right? So, like, what mm-hmm. letter will we get in? What letter will we get in book five? Do you think we'll get Hoyt again? I think so. Mm-hmm. I think it could be fun if we get one where it's like we get a Hoyt letter where it's like we have a problem. Ooh, <laughs> like, yeah. even with something's wrong. Before. Something's yeah. wrong. This is bad. I can't trust myself I- anymore. Something. Mm-hmm. I want to yeah. see after after all these harmony two Hoyt letters. I want to see Hoyt a La Hoyt letter two harmony. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because like like we got foreshadowing about odium, terravodium <laughs> in this letter. I think we're things like oh something's wrong. We're not going to know what that something wrong is until the end of the book. Yep. Yeah. I or mean, we're going yeah. to think it's like oh like his memories were altered. Turns out. Teravodium is loose on the Cosmere. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Yikes. Oof. <laughs> I mean, that that would be a problem. Uh, you, you might want to be a little more aggressive than sending a letter, though, if that was the case. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Mm-hmm. And I like, just, uh, just had the thought that, like, if he changed something in the, like, more memories, <clears throat> whether he just did some subtle changes to how Hoyt perceived Ray's and, like, makes Hoyt think that Reyes acted more like Terrentian. So it's he, he wouldn't become suspicious if Terrentian like slipped and didn't act like he was Reyes. Oh, like, interesting. Could, that might yeah. be too hard. Yeah, maybe. Because it has to not be obvious, right? Because mm-hmm. the whole part with Quan was, it's like, no, I remember what it was. Yeah. Even if I'm reading this, I remember. Granted, 
<laughs> Hoyd would have so many memories that that would probably be difficult, but I think he probably remembers the broad strokes of his grudge with race. <laughs> you know, I don't think that's a problem. Yeah. But mm. but that is an interesting idea. I I, I don't know where to go from here in, in the podcast. What what? Like we we kind of <laughs> talked about a lot of the the things, but my my brain is just like. Wow, this is real bad. Like that's that's where mm-hmm. I'm at. Like this is this is yeah. this is very bad. I don't know what else because like it was right at the end. I like, know. Don't yeah. have like the fallout of yeah. this yet. Yikes! I, I'm excited. I'm a little <laughs> scary, but I'm also just really excited. Oh, it's it's much more frightening. Like the mm-hmm. tension is way up to eleven. Here. Yeah, like narrative sense, very exciting. From me wanting the people to live. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Dalnar being effused, much more likely after Tervangian has the power. Mm. And <laughs> God, what a relationship that would be. It's like, hey, you're my fuse now, Dalnar. You're gonna do what I want. It's like, okay, cool. Yeah, it's like reading this book. I'm like, I had the idea, like, oh, like maybe Teravangian is going to end up being Dalinar Squire. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> that did not happen. That did not happen. But like the <laughs> reverse made that choice. Kind of could. The reverse. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, uh, I I imagine you all agree with this statement, but I imagine Teravangian is not. He doesn't have his curse boon thing anymore. Like that. That's irrelevant now. I right? doubt it. Like, yeah. yeah. I d- that was, that was just He's another thing. So was, much expanded. Yeah. I, I don't think it's going to be truly relevant. Yeah. Yeah. It's like that was kind of okay. connected to his body and he doesn't have mm-hmm. a physical body and stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I guess like it comes from cultivation. So she could also just like if it still was a thing, thing he could, she could say, or would probably just say, okay, mm-hmm. you're good now. That, yeah. that would be very, very bad if he did still have it, because I don't yeah. think we want a day where, where Teravangian oh, is all passion, or a day where Teravangian uh, is all mind and has absolutely no compassion whatsoever. Those both seem yeah, like bad worse. scenarios mm-hmm. with the power of Odium. That's worse. Yes. That, is, that is very bad. <laughs> uh, especially considering how much a shard could do in a day. Mm-hmm. Even though we don't really see them doing very much in a day, generally, but... Presumably, they are doing things. I mean, Harmony uh, so, says that, like, TV formed schedule pretty quickly. So yeah, they yeah, can right. do a lot. They can do a lot. That's right. I think, I think they could do a lot in the day. They're just so infinite that why bother? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I imagine probably a lot of what they're doing is like, let's stare into the spiritual realm again <laughs> and see if I can get more understanding from this because, like, that probably takes a while, even with your expanded mind, to truly grasp all the possibilities and plotting. I don't know. Other final thoughts? I'm surprised we didn't go three hours. That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. So we know Odium was like had that line to Moash about like not not like blessing people by making them an avatar. Do we think Teravangian would make any avatars? Oh yeah, there is that line about about <laughs> avatars. You're totally right. Yeah, let me. I'm I'm just gonna grab that real quick because uh, yes, that that is very very weird. Odium's talking with Moash. Uh, interesting. Odium said, "You respond to my gift in such an odd way. You are becoming something I have never before created." Vire. Mm-hmm. Some people say I've become your avatar. Vire said. That you act through me, control me. Odium laughed, as if I would give such a power to a mortal. No, Vire, you are na- uniquely yourself. So interesting. Uh, I think we talked about this in our second uh, Rhythm yeah. of War Reactions podcast, because uh, we did talk about it. Uh, but that they were saying how, well, like, Moash is meaning it in more of, like, acting through me, controlling me. And Odium's probably, like, thinking... Oh, the word avatar in the shard sense. It's like, yeah, you're not that. I yeah. didn't do that. Moash was using avatar as it is actually defined. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's like what an actual avatar is. Mm. Not nonsense Brandon came up with. <laughs> I mean, okay, just 
I would not be surprised if, like, the we don't understand the mechanics of Avatar yet. I would not be surprised if it is more similar to the actual meaning than we right now think. It better be. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ian's gonna be furious. Ian will become effused and t- uh, ra- uh, rampage across the Cosmere. Be like, no, I'm destroying every Avatar. This is a stupid word. That That would be you. <laughs> No, I'd be a scholar and I'd just like kill all the scholars naming things stupid. <laughs> like, no, rename this term or else you die. <laughs> Yikes. Yeah. Well, That's if we mean. ever need a new e- evil scholar character, Brandon, uh, Ian is down. <laughs> <laughs> Like, like, I would not be surprised if at some point in the future there's like, well, are avatars a mind given power or are they the, the shard working through someone? It's like, those are the same. I don't know. Like, but people on uh, people in world it have disputes over this. Probably that's probably what he'd say, right? Just yeah. like with cognitive shadows. It's it's a, it's yeah. a topic of great uh, Dis- debate. Contention. Yes. De- debate. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! So, more and more, he's like, oh no! Like it's definitely not the real person. It's just the investiture. I'm like, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I at least like, like that the Stormfather uh, talked about, like, well, you might not be you, but you might be a shadow left behind to Ash and I at the end. Because <laughs> that's basically what he talks about. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Terrifying Gene is terrifying. So that's 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 the moral of this episode. Uh, so yikes and wow. Uh, I I welcome Teravangian as my savior who will take upon <laughs> take my burdens upon himself. Oh great. Nothing will go wrong oh, yeah. with this, Grace. Actually that they you remind me of something I wanted to bring up earlier. Like does or will Teravangian like continue the sort of give me your pain thing that raised it? Like really be I guess willing Ooh, that's a good question. to take away give his brain the pain? <sighs> But Curious. that's that's like exactly what Teravangian like thinks uh, that kings should take on the pain of everyone. Yeah. Isn't that his entire yeah. point? But yeah. it's interesting that like Odium's telling Moash about like Odium's gift. Like that's a thing that can just happen, but that Moash responds to it very interestingly. So that there's clearly something actually there that mm-hmm. uh mm-hmm. and I, I imagine Teravangian would do that because this is Always what he's always wanted to take the burdens of everyone. True, yeah. yeah. But he might use it a little differently. <laughs> it's a good question, though. There's so many things that it's like, oh no, Teravangian is probably plotting way more crafty things than we can think of right now. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, oh no, oh no. <laughs> well, I am sorry, guys, that we haven't done Who's That Cosmere character in so long. Uh, our episodes have gotten very long, and uh, the next two episodes that you will get will be longer than this one. They're, they're very long. But I think it's time for us to do Who's That Cosmere character? This character is from Roshar. Menace. Tia. Tom. Braze. Void in drag on a horse. <laughs> it's time for Who's That? Cosmere character! Call. Alright everyone, welcome to Who's That Cosmere Character, the game show where you send in an email with five clues and a character those clues correspond to, to WTCC at 17thshard.com. I read each clue aloud, and after each one, our panelists have a chance to guess Who's That Cosmere Character. Yeah, uh, some... some- a few people in Discord were, like, l- looking back at old episodes and they're like, hmm, after Rhythm of War, uh... Yeah, you can't exactly say Navani doesn't have magical abilities. It's like, yeah, that's that's true. So, like, if some... If some old submissions don't fit, uh... I'm sorry, we will strike them down. Uh, if they are no longer accurate. Uh, but... Please send them in. We'll get to them probably by 2020, uh, like by the end of 2021, maybe, probably. I don't know. We'll, we'll find out. Yeah. Find out. It, we'll get to them. We'll get to them when they're obsolete again. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> All right. So this first one was sent in by Blackout8444. Okay. Clue one. This character works under an antagonist. 
Wow, it's, it's so hard to not just think Rhythm of War things. With like, <laughs> yeah, it's like, on. Cause like I, I know like we have such a long backlog that nothing is going to be irrelevant from Rhythm of War for a while. Because I want to yeah. be like, oh, Navani. But, you know. Y- yeoman. It is not Yeoman. So it works under an antagonist? Mm-hmm. Tavidian Tekiel, the Lord Prelon. It is not Tavidian Tekiel. Oh, damn. Clue <laughs> 2. This character uses a sword. Oh. Dalinar. It is not Dalinar. Uh, Duke Telrai. It is not Duke Telrai. Nail. It is not Nail. Clue 3. This character is of Skadrian descent. Oh, who the hell uses swords on Scandrium? I know, like, a lot <laughs> well of people. Are... Dan Wells' cameo character. It is not Wellen. <laughs> what antagonist does he work under? He works under, I mean, most of the nobles, but um, Set. At the time we oh, see him, okay, right, Set okay. is an right. antagonist. Yeah, okay, okay. Fine. Fine. Criticism redacted. <sighs> is of Scadrian descent. Okay. Man, I I gotta reread Mistborn, guys. <laughs> I got, I'm I'm getting a little rusty. I I feel like I need to reread them and then do like a YouTube video. It's like I reread this. Yeah. This is what I thought. Hey, uh, is it human? It is not human. Ooh, that's good. That's good though. Under an antagonist, Quellian. It is not <laughs> Quellian. Clue four. This character tries to fight Vin. Oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> tries, so evidently did not go well. Like most <laughs> people. Actually, Vin's very good at winning fights, you know? Like, in yeah. Hero of Ages, like, how oh, ruin you're fighting me? Yeah, that's not gonna go well. Who is carrying swords in this one? <laughs> yeah. Because Kelsier killed all those venture guards. But the, the haste killers mm. had, had like clubs. Stops, right? They didn't yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But we're in era one, that's good. That's good that it's not <laughs> era two. Because I'm like, people don't use swords in era two. I'm just a sword, not a dagger. You, you no, know screw it. I'm yeah. gonna say Sean Alariel. It is not Sean Alariel. I, I know, I know it's wrong. Yeah. I know it's wrong because she didn't yeah. use a sword. She uses obsidian and daggers because she's a Mistborn. New cl- no clue whether he ever used the sword, but uh, Straff Venture. It is not Straff Venture. Okay. Mm. I don't think that person's not an antagonist. Yeah. I mean, Straff's an antagonist. I mean, that's not who I'm yeah, thinking yeah, of. Yeah, yeah, no, I know. Okay. <laughs> but he could also, like, he worked under an antagonist. Oh, yeah, so... Straff didn't do that, yeah. Yeah. Has anyone guessed saying? Zane doesn't nope. use a sword. Why would he? Yeah, so, why would Miss Brown ever use yeah, a sword? Ex- ex- <laughs> like, yeah. Swords are such a liability with <laughs> Alphonse. So, so could, could you? Is it use a sword or like carries a sword? The exact wording is, uh, uses a sword. Uses okay. a sword. And by the way, ob- obsidian swords probably a terrible idea. I think those <laughs> would shatter instantly. So, yeah. You know. Um. No, actually. Um. There are. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's not like a single like shaft of. It's oh. more like a club with like. Oh, lots of oh okay, yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's a, it's a um. They use it in Aztecs. Aztecs. Sure, sure, it. sure. Yeah, sorry, um, I, I just had a decade flashback of people trying to make characters with obsidian swords. That's just pure <laughs> obsidian. I'm like, I don't think that works at all. Ian, we're waiting on you. But I, I know. Tried to fight Vin. I'm good. No, we already guessed Yeoman, never mind. Because <laughs> you said Yeoman, and I thought the um, leader of the Scar Rebellion, and I'm like, obviously yeah. no. But no, you said Yeoman. Um, and I also always forget the name of that rebel leader. I hate no. Quellian. No, 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 the leader of the Scar Rebellion in book one? Yeah. Isn't that Yarda? Yeah, so, Is that Yarda? It starts with a Y. Yeah, it's, I think it's yeah, Yarda. But, yeah, it's Yarda. Nice. I'm gonna guess Ham because at one point Ham did work for the Lord Ruler in the army. That's true, yeah. It is not Ham. 
Clue five. This character is a set. Oh, crap. Jordan. Uh, yes, it is your, I, Jordan. Jordan. Jordan, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Seth's son, Alrian's brother. Ah, okay. Oh, right, right, wait, wait, yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Really? G-N-E-O-R. Oh, sorry. I thought you were somehow thinking of Nuorden, that, that no. obligator. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, and I was like, wait, that's Orion's brother. I was just like, <laughs> mind blown for a second. Wow, I don't Forgot remember about that him. Per- I, I don't remember that person. Yeah. Me neither, but... It's that person? Yeah. Huh. They, they had a lot of chapter references from Well of Ascension. It wasn't like a one-chapter thing. <laughs> I don't think. All right, so this second one was sent in by um, a Neon Fox tribute. Oh, I, I know that name. I know that name. Oh, you do? I do know that name. Yes, I do <laughs> know that name. I don't remember from what, but in, uh, I think I've seen some wobs by them. I think. Cool. Yeah. I, I vaguely know who you are. <laughs> Clue one. This character has multiple names. Zane. It is not Zane. Vesha. It is not Vasher. Vasher. This, came, this oh, was submitted pre-rhythm of yeah, work, correct? Yeah. Yeah, I imagine. Right? Um, yes. I'm going to go Bavadin. It is not Bavadin. Those are all these. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Clue two. This character is dead. Say it again. No, that's not my guess. Um, <laughs> Vin. It is not Vin. People call her lots of different things. I'm going to guess Orisur. It is not Orisur. Because as a Kendra. Mm, that's good. <laughs> I'm going to guess Tinsun then. <laughs> it is not Tinsun. Oh no, he's not dead. Tinsun's not dead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 10 out of 10 guess. Never, guess. never mind. <laughs> okay, clue three. This character is immortal. Is a mortal or is, is immortal, immortal? Is immortal. What was clue two again? Is dead. Character is dead. Palm. It is not palm. <laughs> Watch it not be a Skadrian. Yeah. <laughs> We're just like on. Yeah. Light song? Yezrian. It is not Yezrian. Uh, yeah, light song is what I guess. Oh, it is not light song. Okay. I know it's like, and so far, like. There are, there are multiple Rhythm of War characters that would have fit this. So <laughs> How many <laughs> cognitive shadows can we guess? <laughs> Clue four. This character is a villain. I want to guess Kelsier. <laughs> so wait. So has multiple names, is dead, is immortal, is immortal and is a villain, right? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Dead and immortal. Ati? Hmm? Ati? It is not Ati. I gotta think of more Rosharan things. <laughs> you know, like yeah. yeah. I feel like it's hard not to go to like Lesian or Raboniel. Yeah. <laughs> He's a really hard Grace. Yeah. I've got another guess, but it's gonna be so obvious when I say it though. I'm sure. Do you am, do I owe you a guess? Yeah, I think only Paleo has this time. He said Adi. Yeah. Okay. It's a villain. Is a villain. I mean, they're also dead, so take these things <laughs> how you will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so are they, like, like, actually dead, or, like, they are they dead in, like, a Herald sense of dead? Or, like, Fuse sense of dead? I don't think she's gonna answer that. Yeah, probably not. You jerk. Um... <laughs> I'm gonna go weird, and I'm gonna guess Shayor from... Shayar. I mean, the little girl who was yeah, just yeah, yeah. insane. Yep, that's what you get on who's that cosmic character. It's like, yeah, you're thinking about Rhythm of War. Yeah, you get Miss Arrow <laughs> One and Elantris things over a decade ago. Let's go. An immortal who died. I don't like that look, Grace. I don't like that look. I don't like the evil villain. After this is uh, getting, I get a still of this for uh, sh- uh, 17th star emoji. 
<laughs> just trying to think of immortals who actually died. Like, it's really hard. <laughs> Diloph. It is not Diloph. I know. He probably has a long age or something. I don't know. Clue five. This character has betrayed a main character. Denth. It is Denth. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that, okay. that, that it was, was like it was. Yeah, I yeah. I don't think any of us have guessed Rashik because it would have either mm, been Rashik yeah. or Denth for me. Mm, yeah, yeah, that's a good point. It's good point. I when you when you said is this character like actually dead or like <laughs> I wanted to be like why can't it be both? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean like well, I mean like in the Herald sense of dying, yeah. they're going to come back. But in a return yeah. sense, then like they they're like dead, dead. But they, the, I mean, they died twice, right? So, mm -hmm. whereas heralds, they they just keep coming back. <laughs> well, that's that's a good one. That De death was good. <laughs> I I have I have another bit because you guys need to know what this corgi's name is now. Mm -hmm. It's Obium. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> And it's actually a cor it's a corby, not a corgi. No, no. Well, see, yeah, you can take off the outfit. Ah, okay, and, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. But but this one's in. Yeah, so so this is <laughs> this is ob um. So, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, false news are to cover all your news discussion theories and fun that you could ever want. Uh, we got lots of fun nonsense in discord and our forums uh so you can join those you can find us on facebook twitter soundcloud you can subscribe to youtube uh if you like all this nonsense you can support us on patreon for more puns like this <laughs> and uh yeah uh yeah that's it i don't know i don't know where we're going with this see, see you next time Goodbye. <laughs> <Bye>. Goodbye. <laughs> Call.